This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, sci-fi, thriller film called Mother Android. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. On Christmas Eve, Georgia shows three positive home pregnancy test kits to her boyfriend, Sam. To convince him that she's pregnant, Sam is not too happy about the news but assures Georgia that he'll support her on whatever she decides. He then asks Georgia to marry him, but she ignores the proposal when their friends arrive to fetch them for a Christmas party. As they prepare to leave, Eli, the android, wishes Sam a happy Halloween, so Sam reminds him that it's Christmas. When they arrive at the party, an android named Daniel serves Georgia an alcoholic drink, but Sam warns her that she shouldn't be drinking. Georgia accidentally drops the drink as they argue. Later, Georgia goes to the bathroom with her friend, Sarah, to announce the pregnancy. As she's about to tell Sarah what she'll do about the pregnancy, a screeching noise fills the house, and the lights suddenly go out. When they leave the bathroom, they find Daniel strangling their friend, Connor. The host desperately tries to pull Daniel away from the woman, but the android repeatedly slams him against the glass door. Daniel goes after the other guests and catches Sam. As Daniel attempts to kill Sam, Derek, beats the android with a baseball bat until he stops moving. Soon, they hear gunshots and sirens in the distance. When they go outside to investigate, they discover that the other androids are killing humans. Sarah gets shot in the head as they watch the incidents unfold in bewilderment. The city descends into chaos as the robots rise against the humans. The android rebellion forces Sam and Georgia to hide in the forest. As Georgia's due date nears, they start thinking of names for the baby. Georgia is sure that the baby will be a girl, but Sam contends that it will be a boy even in Georgia's physical condition. The couple travels across the woods to get to a safe place. They steer clear of the main roads to avoid the androids. The couple soon finds a secluded military camp. After taking their weapons and ensuring that they were not robots in disguise, the soldiers let them in. During a physical checkup, Georgia tells Dr. Howe that they tried to go to New York City after the Blitz. However, they never reached the city because the military detonated an EMP weapon. Howe notes that New York was devastated after the next wave of androids arrived and swarmed the soldiers. When Georgia reveals that they're heading to Boston, Howe warns them that they can't go straight to the city because it's heavily fortified. The area surrounding it is no man's land, and traveling to the city is a big risk because of Georgia's pregnancy. Georgia then asks the doctor how she could cut the umbilical cord after giving birth. Howe advises her to have the baby at the camp because she shouldn't be traveling in her condition. Georgia then discloses that Sam wanted them to reach Boston before giving birth because they found a pamphlet that promises to take families with babies somewhere safe overseas. Howe has heard about it, but she notes that there are rumors that the people in charge are only taking the mothers and the babies due to the dwindling food supply. How then lets Georgia hear the baby's heartbeat through the stethoscope. Outside the clinic, Sam approaches a soldier on patrol and asks if they have shipments going to Boston so they can hitch a ride. The soldier remarks that no one goes there because they can't get through no man's land. He notes that Boston seems impregnable because of the troops and the EMP, but it would be vulnerable once they detonate the weapon. Sam discloses that he and Georgia hope to get on a boat to Korea because they heard that it's safer there. That night, Georgia sees a man arriving at the camp, but the soldiers won't let him in because their detector indicates that he's not human. The man contends that he had a hip replacement and begs him to let him in, but the soldiers decide to shoot him. Later, Georgia tries to convince Sam to stay at the camp and give birth there, but Sam points out that it will be harder to travel to Boston with the baby. Georgia stresses that she'll go if he can find a safe way for them to travel. Georgia then mentions the rumor that people in Boston don't take fathers on the boat. Sam remarks that Georgia and the baby should go, and he'll just stay behind and figure something out. Georgia, however, castigates him thinking that he wants to put her on a boat alone so that she would no longer be his responsibility. Sam approaches the soldier he talked to earlier to convince him to take them to Boston. However, the man tells him that he'll only give him a ride close to the city if Sam fights him and knocks him out. Sam agrees to fight the soldier, hoping that he will fulfill his promise. In the morning, a soldier wakes Georgia up and takes her to the captain's tent. The captain notifies her that Sam beat up the patrolling officer so severely that he broke his skull and blinded him in one eye. Due to Sam's actions, they're expelled from the camp. On their way out, Howe gives Georgia some medicine and tells her how to cut the umbilical cord. Georgia gets out of the camp ahead of Sam as he begs the soldiers to return the revolver they confiscated because he needs it to protect Georgia. Sam follows Georgia as soon as the soldier hands him the revolver. 
Later, Sam apologizes to Georgia for jeopardizing their chance to deliver the baby safely. He assures her that he can protect her throughout their journey. When the couple comes across a house, Sam leaves the revolver with Georgia and goes inside alone with a machete to see if there are any threats. After a while, Sam comes out of the house and waits to tell Georgia that it's safe to go in. While Sam searches the house for a mattress, he finds a Polaroid camera and takes a selfie. He decides to take the camera when he sees that there's still one photo left. He intends to use the last shot to take a photo of the whole family after their baby is born. Georgia realizes that it will take them two weeks to travel to Boston because they have to take an arduous route to avoid the androids surrounding the area. It will only take them a few days if they head straight for the city, but they need to be silent. Georgia suggests having the baby in the house so they can take their time traveling to Boston once the baby arrives. When Sam asks her if she thinks that the situation will return to normal, she says it will never be the same, but she is still optimistic that something good will happen. In the morning, Georgia finds Sam trying to fix a motorcycle. Sam wants to use it to go straight to Boston because he believes that they'd be able to reach the city within a day. Georgia reminds Sam that they need to travel quietly, but he's concerned that having the baby before going to Boston would make the journey difficult because the child could attract the android's attention when it cries. Soon, Georgia packs her bag and gets on the bike with Sam. Before riding away, Sam hands her the revolver and tells her to watch out for androids. The motorcycle engine roars throughout the woods as they go on their way, and after driving for a while, the couple stops beside a river to rest. Suddenly, Georgia sees an android staring at them from afar, so she immediately alerts Sam. The android starts running towards them, so Georgia quickly gets on the motorcycle. As they drive away, another android pursues them. Georgia manages to shoot the robot, but more androids emerge, and drones join the pursuit. They soon realize that they can't outrun the androids, so Sam instructs Georgia to get off the bike so he can distract the robots while she flees. Sam tells her to go back to the river and wait for him there. As Georgia hides from the drones, a man approaches her and signals her to keep quiet because there's an android on top of the rock behind her. When the android leaves, the man advises Georgia to come with him. Georgia refuses because she wants to wait for Sam, but the man contends that the androids have taken him. Georgia only decides to go with him when she starts feeling contractions. The man takes Georgia to a shipping container hidden deep in the woods. Georgia asks the man how he managed to hide from the androids, but he wouldn't respond. Instead, he tells her about a play written by Czech author, Carol Kapek. The story is about a scientist who created a new life form to prove that there is no god. He notes that the scientist's creations, the Robotai, are much like the modern androids. At first, the Robotai were happy to serve humans, but they soon launched a rebellion that led to the extinction of humans. The man points out that Kopak's play introduced the word robot to the human language. He contends that humans foresaw their own demise when they called their mechanical creations robots. The man then discloses that he was an AI programmer at Raster Robotics. He claims that he is able to survive because he knows how the androids think. When Georgia asks what went wrong on the night of the Blitz, the man argues that they shouldn't have built the robots in the first place. The man tells Georgia that his name is Arthur and gives her a can of tuna before going to sleep. Later, Georgia starts feeling contractions again, but her water hasn't broken. Georgia tells Arthur that she needs to find Sam, but Arthur advises her to forget about him because she'll get killed. Arthur asserts that the robots were able to hack human programming, and they're going to use the knowledge against them. He argues that love and emotional connections keep people alive, but androids are willing to sacrifice themselves because they have no self-preservation instincts. Arthur advises Georgia to save herself because her love for Sam will kill her. He warns her that the androids have strategies that no one has ever thought about. Arthur starts pleading with her to follow his advice, so Georgia asks him why he cares so much. Arthur then asks her if he can listen to her womb. When Georgia agrees, he embraces the womb and starts crying about the people who died. Arthur then offers to take her to Boston safely. He puts a vest on Georgia and tells her that it will mask her from the android's optical sensors and render her invisible to them. However, he warns her that they can still hear and smell her. When Arthur notes that he won't let her use the vest to rescue Sam, she tells him that she'll find Sam with or without the camouflage. Since Georgia is determined to save Sam, Arthur takes her to a house where the androids keep humans captive. He then gives Georgia another vest for Sam to wear to escape. Arthur warns her that the robots will chase her for four miles until they detect the EMP radius signal. He remarks that there's still a chance for Georgia to walk away and points out that Sam will never know. However, Georgia refuses to leave Sam because she knows that she'll regret it. Georgia soon enters the house and searches the rooms for Sam. She comes across two androids in a hallway, but they don't notice her. 
Georgia encounters a female android when she enters the room, so she does her best to stay quiet while evading her. Soon, Georgia finds the room where Sam and another captive are held. As she attempts to untie Sam, she notices that his legs are broken. The other captive pleads with Georgia to release him as well, but Georgia tells him to keep quiet to avoid calling the android's attention. An android suddenly arrives, so Sam distracts him by taunting him. The android stomps on Sam's legs several times before leaving the room. Georgia releases Sam as soon as the robot is gone, but the other captive starts screaming when Georgia refuses to help him. Several androids chase after them as they run to the garage door, but Arthur arrives and kills the robots. As Georgia lies on the ground, she realizes that she's about to give birth. Arthur takes Georgia and Sam back to the shipping container and drives away. When Georgia wakes up, she finds herself in a hospital in Boston. A doctor informs her that Sam is on the next bed and she has given birth to a healthy baby boy. She adds that Arthur is also at the hospital because he collapsed after bringing them there. The doctor then notes that Georgia was unconscious when she arrived, so they performed a C-section. After the doctor leaves, Georgia brings the baby to Sam. As he holds the baby, Sam urges Georgia to remove the sheets to see what the doctors did to his legs. Upon uncovering his feet, Georgia is shocked to find out that both of Sam's legs have been amputated. Sam tells her that he's fine, and quips that he's getting robot feet when they reach Korea. Sam then suggests naming their baby Forrest, and because Georgia also believes that life is like a box of chocolates, she agrees. Later, the lieutenant drops by the hospital to ask Georgia some questions. When the lieutenant asks how Georgia met Arthur, she explains that Arthur took her to a shelter and helped her rescue Sam from the androids. Georgia notes that she was able to save Sam using Arthur's camouflage vest, but the lieutenant contends that no technology can render humans invisible to robots. Georgia insists that the vest worked, but she soon realizes that Arthur may be an android pretending to be a human as part of their elaborate plan to infiltrate Boston. Georgia then confesses that she made a mistake in trusting Arthur. When the lieutenant looks at Arthur's bed, they see a dead nurse lying on it instead. Soon, they hear screams and gunshots outside the room. As she tries to wake up Sam, she realizes that Arthur intends to disable the EMP, so she gets in a wheelchair with her baby and heads to the basement. On the way, Georgia arms herself with a handgun from a dead soldier. As Georgia tries to unlock the room where the military keeps the EMP, Arthur emerges and pretends to cry about the people who died. When he stops crying, Arthur notes that androids were programmed to display emotions to make humans feel comfortable. He threatens to kill Georgia's baby if she doesn't disable the EMP. As Arthur walks towards her, Georgia shoots him several times until he drops on his knees. She shoots him in the head one more time as he attempts to reach her. When Georgia sees androids arriving, she quickly unlocks the gate to the EMP and tries to shut it behind her. However, she fails to lock it again, so she tries reaching for the EMP switch while holding down the gate. The androids shut down, and the room goes dark as soon as she toggles the switch. A day later, Georgia finally takes a photo with Sam and the baby using the Polaroid camera. As the war between the military and a new wave of androids rages, Georgia and Sam are headed to the harbor with their baby to get on a boat to Korea. After verifying that they're human, a Korean officer informs them that only the baby can go on the boat because they cannot afford to take care of more people. The officer further points out that living in Korea will not be possible for Sam because he's an amputee. Sam convinces Georgia to let the baby go because he could die if he stays with them. Georgia agrees and writes a letter to her son to tell him how much she loves him. She expresses her wishes that they would all live together as a family, but she notes that all they can give him is a chance to live a normal life with another family. The officer soon tells them that they must leave, so Georgia and Sam kiss the baby before handing him off to the Koreans. Georgia begs the officers to find someone who will love and take good care of their son. While they watch the boat leave, Sam assures Georgia that the baby will be alright as she cries in despair. Some time passes, and Georgia ends up traveling alone after losing Sam. She burns Sam's photo in a fireplace and contemplates burning the picture of them with the baby, but she decides to keep it. When Georgia comes across a traveling military unit one day, she decides to go with them to Portland, where humans are building a new base. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.